Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So this is on page, uh, we're on page um, 2012 of the of the PDF and we've reached the second point here, Athani. Sukutu al Khusumati Ma'al Khalq. So here the author is speaking about the um, signs that a person has Rida. And the first sign that we uh, spoke about we spoke about it for a number of weeks and that's when we said a person's state is the same whether they're going through adversities or they are enjoying um, essentially the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so their state is the same they're essentially content in, in both situations the second uh, sign here is the author Imam al-Harawi um, he says here al-thani suqut al-khusumati ma'al khalq so this is Imam al-Harawi's words so this is where a person stops uh, essentially having disputes disputes with creation. Now, uh, this is not something which isn't, isn't absolute because obviously there are situations where it's fine, not where it's fine to have a dispute, but where, where you will have a dispute with someone and you will take certain channels to... Um, to try to resolve those disputes either by going to a qadi, a judge or a, a court or a person of knowledge or an arbiter etc. Uh, so we will, we, we will break this down inshallah. So he says Imam <coughs> Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah يعني أن الرضا إنما يصح بسقوط الخصومة مع الخلق i.e. Rida becomes valid and correct when a person stops essentially having disputes of creation فإن الخصومة تنافي حال الرضا and this is because khusuma, or being in a state of disputation with others, it opposes the nature of rida. وَتُنَافِي نِسْبَةَ الْأَشْيَاءِ كُلِّهَا إِلَى مَنْ بِيَدِهِ أَزْمِنَةِ الْقَضَاءِ وَالْقَدَرِ And it also um, essentially negates attributing things to the one in whose hands like control of fate. Um, so obviously if, you, if, if people understood that everything happens by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and that fate lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then essentially a person would turn to him in order to resolve one's disputes um, and so he goes on to say fil khusumati afatun and so you find in khusuma you find many flaws and deficiencies with uh, khusuma uh, one of the faults one of the blemishes you can say deficiencies falling into like as we said is another sort of synonym for disputation you know being in contention with other people with other creation that's something which opposes the of rida is an indication if a person is always in having disputes of people and they harbor ill feelings and grudges with other that's a sign of a lack of, of a second afa or the second um, fold or flaw um, oh there's some difference with sound does it sound okay everybody is it was it maybe it's just the um uh, keep cutting. Well, I don't understand this. Uh, it's been pretty bad. The sound is perfect. Um, Sound is awful. Ya Rabb. SubhanAllah. <laughs> I don't understand. You. All throughout the whole time we have... We've had no problems. And when it comes to this class, um, it just... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not bothered about... You know what? The, the, the video... Okay. I just want to know that you can see the screen... A sound is okay. Okay, one is I'm going to disable the video. 
maybe it's the video again that's in favor with with, uh, with uh, because what it is video right i am um i'm using a dslr camera it's probably causing the problem my normal webcam works terrible in these light conditions unless i have my normal light set up which is difficult at the moment so this is a temporary look classes so i'm going to disable the video okay just give one minute inshallah Right. Um, can everyone hear me now? The screeching sound of the trains. Uh, right, okay. Let, let me just get my normal mic in. This sound is probably going to be quite poor because this is, this is coming from the computer. I'll just put my normal... Uh, Right, okay, so I've got my normal old mic back. How's the sound now? Good, okay. Okay, I'm doing that. Let me just uh, move all these wires out of the way. Inshallah, by September, everything should be hopefully back on track. Okay. Um, Okay, right. So there'll be no video today then. So just um, just just follow the sound and the uh, and the shared screen, inshallah. Okay. So where were we? So the second uh, deficiency that he he mentions here, naqs uh, tawhid a deficiency in tawhid bi nisbati. So as a deficiency in one's tawheed by attributing ma yukhasam fihi by attributing essentially the the matter of disputation to 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 the servant rather than the creator. Meaning when you have a dispute with someone, then you essentially try to resolve the matter with somebody else. You use a third party as I said, like a qadi or a judge, and you're not essentially referring to the creator. And again, this is a generic point. Okay, this is a generic point, and we're going to come back to this. The third deficiency or fault is nisyanul mujib wa sabab alladhi jarra ila al-khusuma. A person forgets the thing or the cause which essentially brought one to the dispute in the first place, to the khusuma in the first place. فَلَوْ رَجَعَ الْعَبْدُ إِلَى السَّبَبِ وَالْمُوجِبْ لَكَانَ اشْتِغَالُهُ بِدَفِعِهِ أَجْدَ إِلَيْهِ وَأَنْفَعُ لَهُ مِنْ خُصُومَةِ مَنْ جَرَى عَلَى يَدَيْهِ So if the servant was to refer to the actual cause, then, you know, to the actual reason and the cause why he fell into dispute, then he would have been preoccupied with repelling the the thing that essentially led to um, the dispute in the first place. So that that's more beneficial than, um, you know, that's something which is more beneficial for that person to do. فَإِنَّهُ وَإِنْ كَانَ ظَالِمًا فَهُوَ الَّذِي صَلَّتَهُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بِظُلْمِهِ So if he in fact was a wrongdoer himself, meaning the one who has a dispute with somebody else, he he he, he was a wrongdoer himself. فَهُوَ الَّذِي صَلَّتَهُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ And he is the one who essentially brought about the um, the disputation upon himself due to his own wrongdoing. 
Allah says in the Quran, أَوَلَمَّا أَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَدْ أَصَابَتُمْ مِثْلَيْهَا قُلْتُمْ أَنَّا هَذَا قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِكُمْ That when you were afflicted with a tribulation, even though you had suffered twice as much beforehand, then you would say to yourselves, أَنَّا هَذَا Meaning, where did this come from? Allah says, قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِكُمْ Say it is from your own selves, meaning the, the problems that you face and the, and the tribulations that you're facing, it's due to your own um, it's due to your own efforts. It's due to your own actions. فأخبر أن أذا عدوهم لهم وغلبتهم بسبب ظلمهم. So Allah informed them that the the harm of their enemy uh, and their overpowering them is a result of their own ظلم. Allah says also وما أصابكم من مصيبة فبما كسبت أيديكم. And whatever afflicts you of a tribulate of tribulations, uh, for, then it's due to what your own hands have earned. وَيَعْفُوَنْ كَثِيرٌ And he forgives much. So, and that's what you find most people, you know, when they fall into disputes of other people, they forget the the cause. They forget about their own wrongdoings. They forget about their own dhulm and that they can potentially be the cause for their problems. Um, people are quick to point fingers at others. فَإِذَا اجتمعت بصيرة العبد على مشاهد على مشاهد القدر والتوحيد والحكمة والعدل and so if a person's insight um, was to essentially witness the the, the the qadr and the tawheed and the wisdom and the justice in what Allah decrees in sadda anhu bab al al khalq in sadda means to, to sort of become blocked so the door of disputations with creation would be closed basically إلا, but this is the important caveat here. إلا فيما كان حقا لله ورسوله except for that which was a right for Allah and His Messenger. Because, you know, I'll be saying that, for example, if someone steals your wealth or someone murders a person, that you just say, yeah, let's be content with it and not, not raise a dispute with other people. No, that's not what he's saying here. When, it, when, it's a, when, when the rights of Allah have been trans, transgressed upon Okay, and someone has violated a uh, haqq of Allah and his messenger, then that's obviously, that's where you would raise the matter. And, uh, you know, you would try to resolve the matter uh, amongst creation. فَالرَّاضِي لَا يُخَاسَمُ وَلَا يُعَاتِبُ فِي مَا يَتَعَلَّقُ بِحَقِّ اللَّهِ We said here there was a mistake. Uh, if you remember... Uh, فَالرَّاضِي We said that فَالرَّاضِي لَا يُخَاسَمْ وَلَا يُعَاتِبُ إِلَّا فِي مَا يَتَعَلَّقُ بِحَقِّ اللَّهِ Okay, so إِلَّا فِي مَا يَتَعَلَّقُ بِحَقِّ اللَّهِ So there's an important word that's missing there. So the, the, the one who's content, okay, the one who's content, then, you know, he doesn't engage in disputes, he doesn't critique other people, except in that which is related to the rights of Allah. And this was, وَهَذِهِ كَانَتْ حَالَةُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ This was the state of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَكُمْ يُخَاصِمْ أَحَدًا He would not go into, and or he would not have a, a disputes with other people. وَلَا يُعَاتِبُهُ Nor would he um, you know, in, in, engage in, uh, or he, he wouldn't... Um, sort of criticize or critique other people illa fi ma maybe a critique is not a good translation here um illa fi ma yata'allaqu bi haqqillah except for that which was related to the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kama annahu kana la yaghdabu li nafsi just as the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana la yaghdabu li nafsi he wouldn't become angry over him over his own self over his uh, over uh, over himself uh, meaning, if people were to, for example, assault him, or people were to uh, insult him and, and curse him, for example, he would just, you know, he, he, he just, just ignore it. Essentially, you know, he wouldn't make it and turn it into a matter of of dispute with other people. فَإِذَا انْتُهِكَتْ مَحَارِمُ اللَّهِ لَمْ يَقُمْ لِغَدَ لَمْ يَقُمْ لِغَدَ بِهِ شَيْءٌ حَتَّى يَنْتَقِمْ لِلَّهِ. But if the rights of Allah essentially were violated, then that's essentially um, you know, he would, uh, uh, he, he, his anger would become apparent until, you know, he would um, take vengeance for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَالْمُخَاصَمَةُ And so disputations with others لِحَظِّ nafsi 
for, so muhasama for your own interests so falling into disputes for your own interests your own personal gains over worldly matters over issues which don't involve the right of Allah don't involve um, uh, matters relating to the deen etc then these type of disputes worldly matters then you know the, the, the servant of Allah should be very forbearing and be willing to overlook those matters and not take things um, to heart so frequently so this he says you know when when people fall into disputes for their own personal interests this this extinguishes the light of Rida and it also removes its splendor and so basically you know it, it spoils the sweetness of rida so it's a it's a deficient state so that's the second um, uh, um, the second sign of of rida so that's an important caveat really that we have to mention that um you know, we, we, a person who has rida, you'll find that they don't fall into disputes with other people very often. That's because they're content with what has been decreed. But this doesn't mean that as Muslims we are walked over, people can wrong us, people can commit crimes, and we just, you know, play the rida card. No, what we say is that if it involves violating um, uh, the sanctity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, then obviously in that situation something must be done. Uh, about it. Uh, the third um, the third condition or the third essentially quality in that a person needs to have in order to truly um, have Rida. Uh, is there, will the sound okay everybody? Yeah okay. الخلاص من من المسألة لهم والإلحاح freeing oneself or, or essentially freeing oneself from from asking people مسألة here means like um, doesn't mean مسألة as in فقهي مسألة this is the مسألة of asking other people begging basically so freeing oneself from begging other people والإلحاح and and being persistent and insistent when when asking other people and so in this section um because this this uh um because the, the term mas'ala as as we will see what when ibn qayyim speaks it explains it can be understood in two ways it can be understood to mean begging and it can be understood to mean generally asking people for things right so obviously they're two different things i mean they they both are similar in the sense that you're asking somebody for something but obviously begging is is very particular so he will speak about begging first, but then he will speak about um, asking people generally, and, um, and 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 what about asking Allah for things, etc. So this, the last part of this section in particular is very interesting. So he says, وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ الْمَسَلَةَ وَالْإِلْحَاحَ فِيهَا ضَرْبٌ مِنَ الْخُصُومَةِ And that is because asking other people, والإلحاح, begging other people, begging people and being insistent. Then this is a darb min al khusuma. Then this is a type of disputation, which is quite interesting. Wal uh, munaza'a and challenging. Wal muharaba and sort of muharaba is a very strong term. It's like when you go to a war with others. Wal ruju' an 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 malik al darr wal nafi ila man la yamlik li nafsihi darr wa la nafa illa bi rabbihi. And it's also sort of departing away. Al ruju' an malik al darr. You're, you're essentially going back, you're stepping away from the king of harm and benefit to to a person who cannot possess for himself any benefit or harm except through our Lord. So meaning that uh, when you beg somebody, you're essentially going to somebody for your own interest or you're going to somebody to repel harm. And in reality, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who possesses benefit and he's the one who repels harm. Um, 
but how is it a type of I mean he says it's a type of khusuma and munaza and muharaba okay and, and and this is because when you're you when you're begging other people and you're asking other people you're essentially asking them to give you something it's as if to say look you need to give me something right you need to give me something that and and you're almost you know, it's, it, he's not saying it, it is a disputation, but it's a type of disputation. Because when you have a dispute with someone, you're engaging with somebody else. You're demanding something from somebody else. You're demanding your right. right. So when you're begging, you're also demanding something from somebody else. And that's why he says begging is a type of khusuma. The idea is basically with, with, with whether it's begging or disputing with somebody, you're engaging with the other party when you should be really engaging with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the whole point. وَالْإِلْحَاحُ يُنَافِي حَالِ الرِّضَى وَوَصْفَهُ وَوَصْفِهِ And ilhah, being insistent and persistent in asking, again, it, it again opposes the state of rida and its and its qualities and its description. وَقَدْ أَثْنَى سُبْحَانُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَسْأَلُونَ النَّاسَ And Allah has praised those who do not ask other people. Allah says, "Lil fuqara illadin uhsiru fi sabil Allahi la yastatiyoon darba fi al-ard. Yhasabuhum al-jahil aghniya min al-taafuf. Ta'rifuhum bi simahum la yasaloon al-nasa ilhafa." So, meaning, give your charity to the fuqara, those who, when they are essentially um, encircled and they can't move, for example, in the land because you know, they're being watched or they're being held under siege. لا يستطيعون ضربا في الأرض They cannot move around in the earth. The, the Allah describes, يحسبهم, The ignorant people think that they are wealthy. These fuqara, they will think that they are wealthy. Why? Um, due to their ta'affuf, due to their chastity. And here, this chastity, chastity is not the sexual chastity, but the chastity in, in terms of withholding from asking other people. تَعْرِفُهُمْ بِسِيمَاهُمْ You will know them by their sign. لَا يَسْأَلُونَ النَّاسَ إِلْحَافَ They will not ask people إِلْحَافًا i.e. with إِلْحَاح i.e. persistently and insistently. They won't keep begging and pestering other people. So that's a sign because and, and, and that's a sign of ridha because if a person is content with their situation, they won't really go around asking other people and begging other people. فَقَالَ الطَّائِفَةَ And so a group they said, يَسْأَلُونَ النَّاسَ مَا تَدْعُوا حَاجَتَهُمْ إِلَى سُوَالِ And here he'll go into, he will sort of divert into a, a, um, a, a, a very niche sort of masala, uh, which is, you know, the exact quality. What does Allah mean by la yasaluna nasa il hafa? So he'll uh, we'll kind of, we'll try to go through this quite quickly. Um, so he says uh, uh, they ask the people. They ask people. So a group of people said that this means that these poor people they basically ask people um, according to their needs, right? So they ask according to their needs. Walakin la yulhifun, meaning however they do not. لا يلحفون الحافة. Basically, they don't. They're not persistent. Okay, when they're asking, فنفى الله عنهم سؤالهم الإلحاف. So Allah negated that the the quality of إلحاف. لا مطلق السؤال. He didn't negate that they don't ask at all. No, they do ask, but they don't ask in a begging nature. قال ابن عباس ابن عباس إذا كان عنده غداء لم يسأل لم يسأل عشاء. That if he had, for example, lunch, lam yasal ashan, he wouldn't ask anything for um, dinner, right? So he has enough, basically. فإذا كان وإذا كان عنده عشاء لم يسأل غدا. And if he had dinner, if he had food for dinner, then he wouldn't ask for food for lunch. Okay. So meaning he, they would only ask according to their level of need. They would only ask for what they for what they needed. Uh, immediately. وقال الطائف but another group said منهم الزجاج والفراء وغيرهما and you know these are special linguists uh, and a group of scholars they said um, بل الآية اقتضت ترك السؤال مطلقا no actually they said the ayah means that 
they wouldn't ask people at all, mutlaqan. So the first group said, no, they, they would ask because what Allah is, Allah is negating ilhaf. He's negating that they were asking in a begging nature, like insistently and persistently. Because they said, look, Allah described them with ta'affuf. And we said ta'affuf is like when you withhold from asking. Ta'affuf literally means chastity. And, and, um, and, uh, and, and, and their sign. دون الإفصاح بالمسألة لأنهم لو أفصحوا بالسؤال لم يحسبهم الجاهل أغنياء. Okay, so basically saying that you know what Allah is negating is um, that they wouldn't they wouldn't ask other people. That's why the ignorant people or people who, that are, are unaware of the of the poor people's reality they wouldn't consider them to be poor because they wouldn't ask. Um, so that's another view. ثم اختلفوا في وجه قوله لا يسألون الناس إلحاف. And then they differed as to how to understand this part of the ayah where they wouldn't ask people إلحافا. And the judge said the, the meaning here is لا يكون منهم سؤال. I.e. you know they wouldn't ask people at all. فيقع الإلحاف كما قال تعالى فما تنفعهم شفاعة الشافعين. Just as Allah says, and He gives another example in the Quran to illustrate this this point. Um, Allah says فَمَا تَنْفَعُمْ شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِعِينَ the, the intercession of the interceders will, will not benefit them. Now, but the, the meaning here is لَا تَكُونُوا شَفَاعَةٌ فَتَنْفَعُوا The meaning here is it's not that there will be people that will intercede for them فَمَا تَنْفَعُهُمْ شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِعِينَ The intercession of the interceders will not benefit them. The meaning here is no, actually, they won't have any intercession. They're, no one will intercede on their behalf. So when Allah says, La يسألون الناس الحافة, they do not ask people insistently. I.e., that doesn't mean that they ask. Like here, this, 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 this ayah doesn't mean that there, there, is a, there is someone who will intercede on their behalf. No, there, there will be no one. So it's just a linguistic feature, a, a way of negating something. That's the point. وقوله لا يقبل ولا يقبل منها عدل أي لا يكون عدل فيقبل ونظائره. okay so another similar thing with regards to intercession as well. قال إمر القيس أن إمر القيس هو الزبير يسد على لاحب لا يهتدى لمناره على لاحب لاحب is like a wide expansive it says here um, I think it says in the footnote لاحب اللاحب الطريق الواضح it's like a, a very clear path so Upon a path, a clear path, لا يهتدى لمناره Meaning, he will not be guided to a, to a manar, like a, like a lighthouse. So he's on a clear path, but despite that, um, literally, على لاحب, meaning he's so blinded, even if he's on a clear path, he will not be guided to the lighthouse. The lighthouse you can see from a distance. But the meaning here is, ليس له منار يهتدى به But the meaning here is, he doesn't have a manar, like a lighthouse, in the first place. Not that there is one and he can't get there. So basically, that's just a difference. That's just to indicate um, that this ayah about ilhaf, it can be understood in two ways. It can even mean um, they don't ask people at all, or it means that these fuqara basically don't ask people in a, in a begging nature. So there's some khilaf there. Um, and so he, there are other quotes like Al Ibn Al Anbari, La Yasaluna Al Batta, so a similar opinion. They do not ask people at all. فَيُخْرِجُهُمْ السُّؤَالَ فِي بَعْضِ الْأَوْقَاتِ إلَى الْإِلْحَافِ فَجَرَى هَذَا مَجْرَى قَوْلِكَ فُلَانٍ Yeah, so similar thing. It's no, no point repeating that again. وَقَالَ أَبُو عَلِي لَمْ يَثْبُتْ فِي هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ مَسَالَةٌ مِنْهُمْ لِأَنَّ الْمَعْنَى لَيْسَ مِنْهُمْ Yeah. Uh, so similar saying. قَالَ وَمِثْلُ ذَلِكَ قَوْلُ الشَّاعِرِ another Poem that, that sort of indicates that similar sort of linguistic feature. لا يفزع الأرنب لا ولا لا يفزع الأرنب أهوالها ولا ترى الضب بها ينجحر أي أي ليس بها أرنب فيفزع لهولها ولا ضب that that shouldn't be <laughs> that's an explanation of the that's an explanation of what is above that's not um. Yeah, that's an explanation of, of the line of poetry. It's not 
the actual line of poetry itself. Let me just confirm that in my opinion. Right? Um, yeah, so that 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 just to be clear, that's not what I've highlighted there. It's not um, the poem. The poem is above the line. So yeah, the poem says لا يفزع الأرنب أهوالها. So the أهوال, the terrors. Yeah, أهوال are the terrors. So the terrors don't frighten the rabbit. Yeah, ولا ترى الضب بها ينجحر. And you will not see the lizard, the ضب, the lizard, ينجحر. ينجحر means to go into a a a a ينجحر a جحر. جحر is like the lizard hole. Um. So it, basically, what it's saying is, a laysa biha arnabun fayufzu lihauliha, meaning fayufzu lihauliha. Meaning, the meaning here is, there isn't a rabbit that will be frightened by its terrors, and nor is there a lizard that will go into its hole. Now, but the line of poetry actually says, okay, it actually says, it it, it makes it seem as though there is. A rabbit, but it doesn't sort of become scared due to the terrors. So again, it's another sort of linguistic feature. But yeah, وقال الفراء نفل إلها. Yeah, okay. So anyway, that's a side issue. I don't want to even. I think um, there was no need to go into that much detail. Um, the point is that a, a person who is content wouldn't uh, fall into begging. Okay, except in those areas where it is permissible. Right, uh, and here he's going to explain this. So faslun. So this is another subsection which is um, uh, which will clarify this further. Well, um, masala fi. So masala in this context he means begging. So begging fil asli haramun. So begging in origin is haram. Wa inna ma ubihat li hajatin wa darura. But however, it is permissible due to a, a very strong need or a necessity. لأنها ظلم في حق الربوبية لأنها ظلم في حق الربوبية because begging yeah لأنها yeah it is injustice with regards to Allah's ربوبية okay now just hold that for a moment yeah he said so why is and this is the thing why is begging we all know that begging is haram but have we ever thought about why it is haram What's the reason why it's haram? So here he's saying this is one reason. Okay, so this is one reason. Zulmun fi haq rububiya. Okay, it's injustice towards Allah's lordship. Wa zulmun fi haq al and it's injustice with regards to the one who's being asked. Is injustice towards the one who's being asked. وظلمٌ في حق في حق السائل، and it's injustice to one one own self when you when you beg. and here he will explain. أما الأول as for the first، فلأنه بذل سؤاله وفقره وذله واستعطائه لغير الله. this is because it's injustice towards Allah Zulubiya because a person is lowering himself and exhibiting his own poverty. لغير الله to other than Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So when notice when when people beg, look at their sort of demeanor and um, their their body language. You know they're sort of lowering themselves, cowering themselves in front of other people. Okay, and uh, you know that the, the, is like a state of خشوع they have in front of other people. And uh, and this is you know that's that's how a person should be with Allah, not in front of a not well, not with creation. وَذَلِكَ نَوْعٌ He says, وَذَلِكَ نَوْعُ عُبُودِيَّةٌ And so this is a type of عُبُودِيَّةٌ This is a type of servitude. فَوَضْعُ الْمَسْأَلَةِ فِي فَوَضِعَ فَوَضَعَ الْمَسْأَلَةِ فِي غَيْرِ مَوْضِعِهَا And so a person has, you know, placed something in his wrong place. Okay, meaning that type of demeanor and attitude and psychological state that should be reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa anzalaha bi ghayri ahliha and he not only that the person has has exhibited those qualities um to, to the wrong people it should you know that should those qualities should be exhibited in front of Allah 
وظلم التوحيد هي وإخلاصه يعني it's the ظلم of Allah's توحيد and, and uh, إخلاص وفقره إلى الله and one's poverty in front of Allah um, and also it negates again it's the, one's توكل uh, reliance upon Allah and being content ورضاه بقسمه being content with how Allah has apportioned his uh, provisions for creation واستغنى واستغنى بسؤال الخلق عن مسألته and a person find self-sufficiency by asking creation but not asking Allah وذلك كله هضم من التوحيد and that's something which is essentially you know it's it's a you know it's a type of wrongdoing you, you know, you're wronging at the توحيد of Allah سبحانه وتعالى ويطفئ نوره ويضعف قوته and it extinguishes the light of توحيد and it weakens its strength and so that's one of the fundamental reasons why begging is haram because you're essentially exhibiting a type of servitude to creation as for wronging the, the one who's being asked because you're usually you'll be asking people um, um, Oh, one second. Sorry, I didn't see that question. Does the excessive amount of evidence provide uh, providing indicate that Ibn Qayyim shows it? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I would say that that's Ibn Qayyim's probably favored opinion, which is that um, that these poor people don't ask people at all. Um, so where were we? For Al Naam. So you're wronging a person by. Um, uh, essentially asking them that which they do not have and that's assuming that the person cannot give right so the person who's being asked he, he, he can't give and also you know you, you are because sometimes you often find people they ask in such a way you know they ask in the name of Allah like Billahi alaykum you know I ask you in the name of Allah please you know, give me. And so w- w- when you hear that, you, 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 you find it difficult not to give, even though you know begging is not good. And you're exposing that person to, to give something away. And even the blame of, of not giving. If So if a person يمنعو, you know, he prevent or he denies or he doesn't give that poor person anything, then he might be blamed. فَإِنْ فَإِنْ أَعْطَاهُ أَعْطَاهُ عَلَى كَرَاهَةٍ And if he, so if he was to give, he would give عَلَى كَرَاهَةٍ You know, in a way that he doesn't like it. He just feels like coerced to give. وَإِنْ مَنَعَهُ مَنَعَهُ عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءٍ and, um, and if he was to withhold from giving, he would withhold, uh, you know, with, 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 with a sense of shame, with haya. Okay, often when you see, when people beg, you know, you don't just like laugh in their face when you don't give them anything. You sort of turn away and you feel, you feel very awkward. Okay, when people ask, okay, and you've seen that. I mean, we've all seen that. We've probably all experienced it because something is telling you inside, you know, maybe you should help them. Maybe you shouldn't. You're in two minds and, you know, you, you look at yourself and you think, oh, look, you look how much I have and look how much that person has. So you feel very awkward. So by begging, you're putting people in a very difficult position. And as you know, as believers, we're meant to be um, empathetic towards other people's feelings. Now, I know that's maybe we should be feeling empathy towards the poor person as well. But then, but then again, you know, uh, you know, we shouldn't be assisting people in in in, in wrongdoing at the same time. So he said, "Hada ida sa'alahum." And that's but that's only if a person wants to ask somebody um, something which is not a duty upon that person to give, right? As for asking somebody something which is a right for them to ask for, okay, and this is not applicable. So if you've, for example, entrusted some of your belongings to somebody, right, and you know, you you ask for it back. You say, "Can I have this back, please?" So you're asking them, you say, and they're sort of like they're not really wanting to give it back, and so you become more insistent. And that's like, "No, you you need to give it back. This belongs to me." Or you lent some money to somebody, and so you you're sort of putting a bit of pressure on them to to give it back. So that's different. Uh, so that you know, in that situation, you won't be wronging the 
another person by asking them. وَأَمَّا ظُلْمُهُ لِنَفْسِهِ As for being unjust to oneself, uh, with this type of giving, uh, asking, sorry, um, فَإِنَّهُ أَرَاقَ مَا أَوَجِهِ Then this person, literally, he will, you know, essentially shed his tears. وَظَلَّ لِغَيْرِ خَالِقِهِ He will lower himself in front of other than his Creator. وَأَنزَلَ نَفْسَهُ أَدْنَ الْمَنْزِلَتَيْنِ And he will put himself in the lower of the two positions. وَرَضِيَ لَهَا بِأَبْخَسِ الْحَالَتَيْنِ And he is content with the worst of the two situations. Meaning he is he's content with begging rather than not begging. وَرَضِيَ بِإِسْقَاتِ شَرَفِ نَفْسِهِ And he's content with essentially, you know, giving away his, you know, self-dignity by, by, by begging. وَعِزَّةِ تَعَفُّفِهِ and, and, and the honor of his تَعَفُّف of, uh, of withholding from asking. وَرَاحَةَ قَنَاعَتِهِ And again, the, the raha, the comfort of being content with oneself. You're giving that all up when you are begging other people. وَبَاعَ صَبْرَهُ وَرِضَاهُ And so he sells his patience and his contentment and his tawakkul and his qana'a بِمَا قُسِّمَ لَهُ Okay, so he sells that all of that, and uh, just for you know, for, for this quality, was tiganahu an an inasi bisual. Wahada ainu zulmihi nafsi. So this is the essence of wronging one's own self. If wada'aha fi ghairi mawdi'aha, since he's placed in his incorrect place, wa akhmal sharafaha, wa awda'a qadraha, wa adhab aizaha, wa sagraha, wa haqraha, wa haqraha, wa radia an takoon nafsuhu taht nafs al masool. And so a person essentially lowers himself, belittles himself by begging. And he puts himself under, essentially the not the authority maybe, but under the, you know, lowers himself in front of the the one who he begs to. And if it wasn't for a matter of necessity, it wouldn't be permissible at all in the in the Sharia. So those are the three essential reasons why begging, right? It's something which is blameworthy because of those three areas. It's firstly, it's. Um, it, it indicates a deficiency in one's tawheed, it, at, and um, it uh, it wrongs the one who you are begging, and you're also, you know, wronging yourself. Okay. وَقَثَبَتَ فِي الصَّحِيحَيْنِ مِنْ حَدِيثَ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بِنْ عُمَرْ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَسْأَلَ النَّاسَ حَتَّى يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَيْسَ فِي وَجْهِهِ مُزْعَةُ لَحْمٍ And now he's going to mention a number of hadith which indicate um, the prohibition of begging. So in this one hadith, a person will not continue asking or begging people until he will come on the Day of Judgment and he will not have any flesh on his face. He will not have any portion or he will not have any muzatul lahmin. meaning he won't have any muscles or flesh on his face. So he'll be, his face will be like a skeleton on the Day of Judgment. And that's because he's removed all sense of nobility. As you know, nobility lies in a person's face. And so begging essentially takes strips away a person their their own nobility. Wa fi Sahih Muslim and also another hadith qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man sa'ala an-nasa amwalahum takathuran fa innama yas'alu jamran fal yastaqilu li yastakthir. And so whoever asks begs people from for, for their wealth whoever begs people begs people for their wealth takathuran in order just to accumulate their own wealth. So you know these are like fake beggars in the sense that you know they only this is their this is the way they make their living through begging in the, in reality what they're asking for is jamr and jamr are like the, the you know the, the the fuel or the stones or the fire um and this is obviously so let him ask a little or let him ask much meaning you know do whatever you want to do basically so it's a, it's a warning that that's obviously to, to indicate it's permissible. وفي الصحيحين عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه and likewise in the Sahihain the Prophet said, "So Allah the Nasi biyadi biyadi he, لأن يأخذ أحدكم حبله فيحتطب على ظهره خير له من أن أن يأتي رجلا فيسأله أعطاه أو منعه." You know, for a person to um, to take a like some string or some ropes and to carry wood on his back. Meaning to go into to, to, you know, to do some sort of menial labor work, that's better for him than to go to than to beg a man, okay, and then to beg a man, أعطاه أو منعه, and then and whether he was to give him or whether he was to withhold from giving him. 
So it's better for that you you do like um, you know hard labor work than 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 to than to beg other people and to be dependent upon other people financially. Um, another hadith, you know, for an yaqdu ahadukum again very similar. Uh, another hadith which is very similar in meaning. And here, but then he says, and that is because that is because the upper hand. The upper hand is better than the lower hand. Okay, and that, that teaches us a very important principle in our religion, which is that as believers, you know, we should be financially independent and not dependent upon other people, uh, whether on, you know, a small community level or on a state level. And, uh, you know, begin by, by taking care of those who you are responsible for. Um... So there are many, and then he quotes many hadith which are very similar uh, in meaning. Okay, um, in this hadith here, we see, um, yeah, so very similar in meaning. So there's no, I, I won't, there's no point going through those hadith. Um, okay, th this hadith here. Let's read this hadith. It says that um, and a group of people from the Ansar, they asked the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning for like money, for wealth, فأعطاهم, and so he gave to them. ثم سألوه فأعطاهم, and then he asked them again and they and, and he gave to them. ثم سألوه فأعطاهم, and then he gave again, he kept on giving to them. حتى نفد ما عنده until he basically everything he had had become depleted. So he said to them, Hina and Faka Kulla Shayin Biadihi. So he said to them after he had completely given out everything. Maya kunu indi min khairin falan ad dahirahu ankum. Whatever I, I have of wealth, um I, I will not store it away from you, I won't hide it away from you. But then he says, Woman yestaif woman yestafif yuifahullah yuifuhullah. Then whoever seeks chastity in terms of wealth, meaning whoever tries to be, you know, tries to withhold, okay, from asking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him, Allah will give him the, essentially that ability to be more independent and, and not dependent on others. And whoever takes that ext extenuous effort to um, to become patient, all right, so you, you you make the effort to try and, have self-restraint and be patient. يُصَبِّرُهُ Allah Allah will give him sabr. وَمَا أُعْتِيَ أَحَدٌ عَطَاءً خَيْرًا وَأَوْسَعْ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ And a person has cannot be given a gift which is better and more vast than sabr. And that's a beautiful hadith that indicates the virtue of sabr. Uh, and وَعَنْ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ عُمَرْ Another hadith as well. Um, Okay, it's very similar in meaning. Um, uh, this hadith is a beautiful hadith as well. When Hakim ibn Hizam qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Hakim ibn Hizam, he said, I asked the messenger for some wealth and he gave to me. And then I asked him and then he gave it to me. Then he said, Ya, ha ya Hakim, inna hadha al-mal khadiratun hulwatun. He said, you know, this wealth khadiratun hulwatun. You know, it's green and it's sweet. You know, he's trying to, it's obviously this type of metaphor to indicate how pleasing and pleasurable wealth is. فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ بِسَخَاوَةِ نَفْسٍ بُورِكَ لَهُ فِيهِ And so whoever takes this wealth, بِسَخَاوَةِ نَفْسٍ سَخَاوَة is when a person is opposite of someone who is miserly and greedy, meaning he takes it not out of greed, you know, he takes it because it's just something, you know, he needs. But it's not out of greed. He will be blessed in that wealth. So whoever takes it, though, بِإِشْرَافِ نَفْسِ إِشْرَافِ here means like you're, you're looking for it. You're very eager for it. You're, you're coveting it. Okay? لَمْ يُبَارِكْ لَهُ فِيهِ Then Allah will not bless him in that wealth. وَكَانَ الَّذِي يَأْكُلُ لَا يَشْبَعْ وَلَا يَشْبَعْ And he will, whatever he eats... Ya'kul wala yashba. He you know he will never be content, he will never be full. Wal yad al ulya khayr man yad sufla and the upper hand is better than the lower hand. And then he said, Look at what Hakim said 
قال حكيم فقلت يا رسول الله والذي بعثك بالحق لا أرزأ أحدا بعدك شيئا حتى أفارق الدنيا He said O oh Messenger of Allah verily by the one who has sent you the truth I will not uh, أرزأ basically I will not um, deprive anyone and this is a very interesting statement to make many because when you ask other people you're taking something away from them so he's saying I will not deprive anyone of anything from their own wealth after after this until I leave the world okay because when you ask someone for wealth in particular you are depriving them from their you know partially of the or from their own wealth وكان أبو بكر يدعو حكيما إلى العطاء. and أبو بكر he used to uh, in, you know call حكيم and إلى العطاء. you know when they had like war booty and they were give, you know distributing out uh, wealth. فيأبى أن يقبله منه. and but he would refuse. أبو بكر you know he would refuse. حكيم would refuse taking any wealth from anybody. ثم إن عمر رضي الله عنه عمر used to do the same thing. دعاه ليعطيه فأبى أن يقبل منه شيئا. again he would refuse. فقال عمر أن عمر يسأل إني أشهدكم يا معشر المسلمين يا معشر المسلمين يسأل عمر يسأل I I make you all you know oh assembly of Muslims I make you all bear witness على حكيم regard حكيم إني أعرض عليه حقه look I'm 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 giving him I'm offering him his right من هذا الفي from this like war booty فيأبان يأخذه and he refuses to take it because he doesn't want it to be said that you know Umar didn't give uh, Hakim his his due rights falam yarza hakim ahada min an-nas ba'da rasulillah san hatta tuwaffiya muttafiqun ala sihhati so he never asked anyone for anything subhanallah until he died and uh, that was the quality of hakim ibn hizam rahimahullah radiyallahu anhu um and um yeah, and then this hadith here, وعن شعبي قال حدثني كاتب المغيرة ابن شعبة قال قال كتب معاوية said معاوية he wrote to المغيرة ابن شعبة أن أكتب إلي شيئا سمعته من رسول الله write to write something to me that you heard from the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم like write me a hadith that you might have heard from the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم فكتب إلي so he wrote to him. And he said, سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, إن الله كره لكم ثلاثا, Allah dislikes of, from, from you three things. قيل وقال, you know, he said this, or this, this was said, and he was said, just was spreading rumors and gossip. وإضاعة المال, and wasting wealth. وكثرة السؤال, and excessive asking. رواه البخاري ومسلم. So here, كثرة السؤال, I mean, he's in this context. I mean, we usually understand it to mean um, asking people questions, but it can also mean asking people of their belongings, asking people for their wealth as well. It can also mean that. وعن معاوية لا تلحف في المسألة فوالله لا يسأل أحد منكم شيئا فتخرج له مسألة مني شيئا وأنا كان في بأيام. So again, these are all hadith which are similar in meaning. Um, um yeah so let's see one second um okay yeah so look at this hadith and this is quite a lengthy hadith وعن ابي مسلم الخولاني رضي الله عنه قال حدثنا حميد so he said, uh, this companion, so قال, كنا عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, تسعة أو ثمانين أو There was a group of companions, nine or eight or seven of us, فقال, and so he said to us, ألا تبايعون رسول الله? Meaning, he, he said to them, will you not give your pledge of allegiance to the Messenger of Allah? And and he said, وكنا حديثي عهدي ببيعة. And so we were very new, basically, to, you know, Islam and to this concept of giving بيعة. Um, فقلنا, and so we said, قد بايعناك يا رسول الله. That we have indeed we have given our pledge of allegiance to you. But then he said again, ألا تبايعون رسول الله. Will you not um, give your pledge of allegiance to the Messenger of Allah? And so 
again, we replied, قَدْ بَايَعْنَاكَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ We have given our Pledge of Allegiance to you. And then he repeated it for another time. So, فَبَسَطْنَا عِيدِينَا So that we extended out our hands. فَقُلْنَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ You know, we, you know, okay, we have given our Pledge of Allegiance to you. فَعَلَى مَا نُبَيْعُكَ So, look, you know, we've given our, our, our hands. So, what should we give our Pledge of Allegiance to you for? قَالَ أن تعبد الله ولا تشرك به شيئا that you worship Allah and do not associate any partners with Him and you pray your five daily prayers وتطيع um, uh, and that you are obedient to your to your leaders okay وأسر كلمة خفية that you كلمة uh, خفية that you uh, basically you know keep to your secrets okay oh sorry no وأسر كلمة خفية so, وَأَسَرَّ uh, كَلِمَةً And then he said very quietly, as if like he wanted them to hear this in particular, وَأَسَرَّ كَلِمَةً خَفِيَّةً وَلَا تَسْأَلُونَ النَّاسَ شَيْئًا And that you do not ask anyone for anything. So this was a group of companions, a small group of companions. Right? Um, and then, فَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ بَعْدَ أُولَئِكَ النَّفَرُ And so, the Rawi, the narrator of the hadith, he said, I saw... A group of some of these, uh, the, the, a group of some of these peak companions, yes, أحدهم, that one of them, like a whip of theirs, would fall on the ground. فما يسأل أحدا ينأول ينأوله إياه, and, and they would not ask another person to help them to that degree. That was reported by Sahih Muslim. So they wouldn't ask anyone for anything. Forget about wealth, even helping them, they wouldn't ask other people. So that's a very high degree, and that's not something that the Prophet ﷺ requested from from everyone, right? He didn't request this from uh, from everyone. Uh, was Hakim related to Khadija? Um, wallahu a'lam. I'm not sure. وعن سمر ابن جندب رضي الله عنه قال قال من الحديث إن المسألة كد يكد بها الرجل وجهه like Begging is, it's like you're, you're toiling, you're, you're really sort of lowering yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, you're sort of abasing your, your, your own self. Unless a man was to ask the Sultan, the leader, because when you ask the leader, you're essentially asking for your rights. So as, as we mentioned before, asking for your rights, there's nothing wrong with that. Unless a person asks for something which is absolutely essential, meaning if you've basically, you know, it's a matter of life and death or it's, a, it's an absolute necessity. So in those situations, we know it's allowed. Um, you know, and there, there's a hadith here that mentions um, the, the circumstances where it's allowed. So, But otherwise, you know, it's only really allowed when... when um, as we said, uh, if it's a matter of urgency, necessity, like you've, all of your wealth has become became destroyed, you know, your house burnt down, and so you need to ask other people for financial assistance in that matter. So that's that's considered okay. Um, okay, so these are the hadith of all sort of convey the similar meanings. Um, we can move on, I think. Um, yeah, so this hadith, the hadith of Qabisa, it, it clarifies it. Um, so the hadith of Qabisa here, he said, uh, he came to the Prophet he said, Tahammaltu am hamalatan. That he said, I, I, I took on like a financial. Um, is is a loan the same as asking? Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, if it's like a a, a necessity in order to for your own living. Okay, if it's in in order to set up a business, for example, and obviously a business is a matter of livelihood, right? And remember that what the illa it revolves around the illa it revolves around. Uh, go back to those three reasons why asking and begging essentially it's blameworthy, right? It's blameworthy, so. If you can avoid those traits of lowering yourself and humbling yourself and and um, feeling abased and ashamed in front of somebody, 
then obviously then th then that removes those blameworthy traits okay and in this day and age you know when 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 you ask like a friend for a favor or you um ask an institution and if it's like a obviously if it's considered a halal sort of loan then those sort of elements are are no longer really there okay um and uh, but again you know if it's something which is especially if it's related to your livelihood okay which is important then th that that won't be considered to be uh, blameworthy in and of itself and uh, yeah so the, so the question that bilal asked so would there be a distinction between asking for a loan from an individual and asking for an institution established specifically for loans yeah that, i mean it, it depends on the way you ask the human as well the the person so usually it's you know a, a person's attitude to asking an individual for a loan will generally be somewhat different than say asking an institution an institution is done in a very formal manner um which is devoid of any sort of emotional um you know you, you won't exhibit yourself and 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 and, and um start pleading with them it's just it's, it's a very formal process you fill in some forms you might not even see a person you could do it online or something yeah so yeah so in principle it's not blameworthy although there is another mas'ala which is is it good to be in debt right and uh, and take out loans then that's another issue altogether and obviously in an ideal situation a person should never really be in debt yeah um, so it, yeah, so he said here to Hamaltu Hamalatan. So he said, I, I I took on a financial responsibility. Uh, and Hamala is um, some would say with, with Himala, it's Hamala. It's like for example, if you if you acted as a as a guarantor, for example, for somebody, and you say, look, I'll pay off your debt for somebody else, or um, you know, you, you uh, paid some money out of your own pocket, or you borrowed some money in order to resolve a dispute between two factions or two tribes or two nations or two whatever um so you know you, you're, you're financially in debt basically so i came to the messenger asking him regarding it so just just stay here basically until the sadaqa comes to us and then we'll give you some some wealth just to compensate you for your um you know, uh, for helping out other people. قال, قال, but then he said, يا قبيصة or قبيصة, إن المسألة لا تحل إلا لأحد ثلاث. That you know, asking, basically begging, is not permissible except in three occasions. رجل تحمل حمالة as as you did, a man who takes on a financial um, responsibility for somebody else. فحلت له المسألة. Then in that situation, it's permissible to ask. Uh, for, you know, to be compensated and then you know until you get what you've basically un un until you're covered and then you will withhold from asking for more and then a man who's afflicted with a jaiha like a sudden calamity that struck all of his wealth like if it was land and, and like crops if it was like a sudden calamity like terrible weather although there was weather that completely destroyed uh, your crops and belongings فحلت له المسألة. And then in that situation you can ask حتى يصيب قواما من عيش until he can basically achieve stability in his livelihood أو قال سدادا من عيش or similar meaning ورجل أصابته فاقة or man who is afflicted by poverty حتى يقول ثم من ذو الحجة من قومه and so until like three people who have like um, intelligence and you know they have an understanding of financial matters um, you know, they can testify to that person that he's been afflicted by, uh, you know, by poverty. فحدث له المسألة. Then it will be permissible for him to ask until he, you know, achieves some sort of stability in his life. As for that, فما سواهن من المسألة يا قبيصة سحت يأكلها صاحبها سحتا. Then it's a type of سحت which is an invalid or impermissible. Other than these three reasons, and it's an impermissible form of asking basically and uh, it's considered to be suht which is like a, a haram means of of um, maintaining yourself right or financially and and and, and with regards to your food um right 
Yeah, so the other hadith are all very, so the rest are just, again, all hadith about begging, okay, and why it's impermissible. Um, yeah, so I think we can, I think we, we've, we've established why it's bad and why it's uh, blameworthy. Um, now here, th th this is where it gets interesting, okay. Now, by the way, I'm not going to take a break because that will probably just go on until about just past 11 o'clock. Uh, inshallah. Okay, so I hope that's okay with everyone. Um, so he says, Now this is where it gets important. Uh, where it's important. فَهَذَا أَحَدُ الْمَعْنَيَيْنَ فِي قَوْلِهِ إِنَّ مِنْ شُرُوطِ الرِّضَى تَرْكُ الْإِلْحَاحِ فِي الْمَسْأَلَةِ He said, this is one of the meanings, pay attention, this is one of the two meanings of, of Imam Al-Harawi saying that from the conditions of Rida is to leave asking or to leave off begging because remember we said mas'ala itself because mas'ala what does mas'ala mean mas'ala means asking but remember we said mas'ala what is it? it can also mean begging so you know what did imam al harawi mean did he mean asking people did he did he even mean asking allah for things which goes back to the a question that a lot of us were were, were we were talking about we still haven't really covered it in as much detail as i would like to you know, how do we understand rida vis-a-vis, you know, dua, right? Because, you know, there are hadith that say you should ask Allah for everything even if it's the, you know, the breaking of a strap of your shoe or your shoelaces. Uh, but then you're meant to be content with your own sort of situation. So where do you draw the line? Okay. So, you know, what does he mean here? From min shurutir rida tarkul ilhah. It's to leave off asking now, so he said, Imam Ibn Qayyim, this is one of the meanings, i.e. what he means here is that you don't beg other people. And he said, this is probably the more This is probably the more more preferred of the two, one of the two meanings. Okay. Why? Because because he, um, he, he, he juxtaposed it with uh, leaving off dispute disputes with creation. So, so obviously he's mentioned leaving off disputations with other people as a sign of rida, and so not asking other people, right? So, for that reason, he thinks that's what most likely what he means. So, you know, you're not asking other people for their things and rights, etc. Uh, but then he goes on to say, "Wal ma'na thani." But the second possible meaning for Imam al Harawi saying, أنه لا يلح في الدعاء. Okay, so pay attention to this. And this is probably the most important part of today's lesson. Um, that he is not insistent in his own du'as. Right, now, again, there are hadith that talk about ilhah, there are hadith that talk about, you know, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being insistent, repeating the du'as, etc. Right? So, keep that to the back of your mind for now. Okay, so, أنه, so what it means is that لا يلح في الدعاء ويبالغ فيه and a, a person doesn't become excessive in their asking, in their du'as. فإن ذلك يقدح في رضاه because that basically tarnishes one's rida. Now he said this is valid in one way, okay, but maybe not in another way. So from one perspective, okay, this is a, a good trait not to have. So it's valid and correct. This is correct. I if the da'i is being insistent in his du'as for aghrad, for his own personal interests, worldly interests, ajila, like immediate worldly interests. So you're begging Allah for worldly interests. وَأَمَّا إِذَا أَلَحَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ فِي سُؤَالِهِ مَا فِيهِ رِضَاهُ وَالْقُرْبُ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَا يَقْضَحُ فِي مَقَامِ الرِّضَى أَصْلًا but if he was to be insistent and persistent in asking Allah in matters which pertain to his pleasure 
and draw closer uh, matters that draw closer uh, one closer to Allah, then that does not tarnish one station of rida at all. In origin, aslan. Okay, so we need to distinguish between the types of dua that you make. So, وَفِي الْأَثَرْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُلِحِينَ فِي الدُّعَى And this is the hadith. Allah loves those who are mulihin in dua. Allah loves those who are sort of insistent and persistent in their dua. That, that's the meaning. So you're asking Allah for Allah's maghfirah, for his forgiveness, for paradise, for him to uh, be pleased with you, for, to, for him to grant you guidance and knowledge and tawfiq. Be have ilhah in those matters, right? But if you keep asking just purely worldly things, then this from this argument, okay, is that you know this is a sign of lack of rida. It's not saying it's haram. It's not saying it's wrong, because remember to have rida is not wajib, right? Um, maybe it, 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 it will be valid as a form of dua. Okay, we're not saying it's wrong. It won't be sinful. But it, you know, a person won't be on the level of rida. That's the point. وَقَالَ أَبُو بَكْرَ الصَّدِّيقَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَبُو بَكْرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ He said, يَوْمُ بَدَرْ On the day of Badr, لِلنَّبِي يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَدْ أَلْحَحْتَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ You have, remember when the Prophet made dua, he raised his hands really high until his cloak fell off his shoulders. So, لَقَدْ أَلْحَحْتَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ Meaning you've really made dua like insistently. كفاك بعض كفاك بعض مناشدتك يعني you know just a part of your munashada meaning just of you know your dua is sufficient your basic dua is sufficient لربك but then he says فهذا الإلحاح عين العبودية but then he said this type of إلحاح it's the essence of servitude right and we will see why we will see why وفي سنن ابن ماجة أن السنة ابن ماجة حديث أبو هريرة قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما لم يسأل الله يغضب عليه the one who doesn't ask Allah Allah will become angry with him so again this is important hadith because you know especially with regards to this question that we were all asking that you know if we're meant to be content with what Allah has decreed for us then why should we ask Allah for anything Right, but then you have this hadith like this: "Man lam yas alillah yaqdub alay." The one who um, doesn't ask Allah, then Allah is angry with him. So, how do we understand that in light of this hadith? He says here. Um, sorry. فَإِذَا كَانَ سُؤَالُهُ يُرْضِيهِ لَمْ يَكُلْ لِلْحَافِيهِ مُنَافِعٍ لِرِضَاهُ the, 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 if the asking, if the way you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it's something that pleases Allah, okay, then that ilhah, that form of ilhah, insistency and um, um, uh, being persistent, um, it, it doesn't oppose one's rida, uh, one's rida for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he'll explain. وَحَقِيقَةُ الرِّضَى مُوَافَقَةُ سُبْحَانُهُ فِي رِضَاهُ The essence of rida is to agree with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to agree with Allah in that which lies Allah's pleasure. بَلِ الَّذِي يُنَافِي الرِضَى In fact, the thing that opposes rida أَنْ يُلِحْ عَلَيْهِ That a person is insistent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مُتَحَكِّمًا عَلَيْهِ مُتَخَيِّرًا عَلَيْهِ because when you're insistent and persistent in asking Allah, uh, for asking something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like you're the one who's deciding, you're, you're the one who's choosing what's best for you. That which you don't really know. right? You don't even know whether that thing, that thing will really, really please Allah or not. Like a person who, this is very interesting, um, who who is insistent in 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 asking Allah fi wilayati shakhs right aw igna'ihi now this is right meaning being persistent in asking Allah to make so and so basically a leader or to rid yourself from a particular ruler 
because you don't know whether that person will really bring about Allah's ridha or not. Or to 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 you know be insistent again to um qada al hajj to see to your needs. For how they unafi ridha because this opposes ridha. لأنه ليس على يقين أن مرضات الرب في ذلك because he is not certain that that is where God's pleasure lies. Right? Okay, take that into account. This will continue. فإن قيل so if it said فقد يكون للعبد حاجة يباح له سؤالها you know, it could be argued that a servant, he has a need of his that and it's permissible for him to ask for فَيُلِحُ عَلَى رَبِّهِ فِي طَلَبِهَا And so he will um, be, you know, uh, uh, he, will, he, will be, he will be persistent and insistent upon his Lord in requesting it حَتَّى يُفْتَحْ لَهُ مِنْ لَلِ حَتَّى يُفْتَحْ لَهُ وَحَتَّى يَفْتَحُ يعني الله له من لذيذ مناجاته وسؤاله Until essentially um, the pleasure that is found in asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes open to that person. وَالذُّلْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَتَمَلُّقِهِ And where a person sort of abases himself in front of Allah. Okay. وَالتَّوَسُّلْ إِلَيْهِ بِأَسْمَاءِ وَصِفَاتِهِ And a person draws closer to Allah through his names and attributes. وَالتَّوْحِيدِهِ وَالتَّفْرِيغِ الْقَلْبِ لَهُ And a person empties their heart for Allah as a result of this dua. وَعَدَمَ تَعَلُّقِهِ فِي حَاجَتِهِ بِغَيْرِهِ And a person... You know, by calling upon Allah, he is no longer dependent upon anybody else. He's dependent upon Allah. مَا لَمْ يَحْسُلْ لَهُ بِدُونِ الْإِلْحَاحِ And, you know, that, you know, that spiritual, those spiritual states of, of lowering oneself and abasing oneself cannot happen except with that type of asking Allah, with that ilhah, when you're really insistent and you're begging Allah and you're persistent in your asking. فَهَلْ يُكْرَهُ لَهُ هَذَا الْإِلْحَاحِ so is this type of ilhah disliked? وَإِنْ كَانَ الْمَطْلُوبُ حَظًّا مِنْ حُظُوذِهِ Even though the matloob, the thing that he is asking for, is like of a of worldly nature. Right? Now so here he says, and this is very important, as I said, you know, pay attention to these points. قِيلَ هَا هُنَا ثَلَاثَةُ أُمُورُ If anything you walk away with today's lesson is these three points. Remember these three, these three points very carefully. So here are three things you must remember with regards to this question. right? Because here he set up a scenario that, look, you might have okay, a worldly need, but that worldly need that you have, right? you're so desperate for it that you, 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 know, you lower yourself in front of Allah, you become so dependent upon Allah, you, in fact, in, you, know, you become spiritually closer to Allah through, your, through, through you begging Him and lowering yourself and making dua and prostration, etc., so, you know, what do we say about this? Is this good? Is it bad? Is it blameworthy? Is, it, is, it, is there is any deficiency in that? So he says the following. Three things to remember. أَحَدُهَا أَنْ يَفْنَى بِمَطْلُوبِهِ وَحَاجَتِهِ عَنْ مُرَادِهِ وَرِضَاهُ عَنْهُ وَيَجْعَلَ الرَّبَّ وَيَجْعَلُ الرَّبَّ وَسِيلَةً إِلَى مَطْلُوبِهِ بحيث يكون أهم إليه بحيث يكون أهم أهم إليه منه فهذا ينافي كمال الرضا به وعنه. That this person أن يفنى بمطلوبه meaning he becomes this term فناء. Okay, he doesn't mean it in the spiritual term فناء of oblivion, but a person becomes so like infatuated with their مطلوب the thing that they want that they're asking Allah for. But that becomes, they're, they're infatuated with that more than they are with Allah's pleasure and what Allah wants from that person. And they make Allah, and this is important, they make Allah وَيَجْعَلْ الرَّبَّ وَسِيلَةً إِلَى مَطْلُوبِهِ They make Allah a means, a means to their desired goal. Right? So, you know, you're begging Allah for something, right? But Allah is just a means for you. It's not the goal. It's just, Allah has just become a means by which you, you know, want to attain something. It's like when you really want to go to a place, you have to get the ticket for it, right? You need the ticket for it. So you go to the ticket you know, salesman 
and you're sort of but you're buying it and you're bartering with the salesman to get that you know to so you can get to your destination so you're basically using the salesman as a means right so some people engage like that with Allah Allah becomes just a means Allah doesn't become the goal so behavior such that the the matlub your goal becomes more important than Allah itself than Allah himself that your goal becomes more important than Allah himself then this clearly opposes um uh there's a there's a letter missing here should be kam kamal right so kamal rida bihi so this opposes the the, the um, you know the the state of rida the perfect state of of rida the perfection of rida the second point to remember so this was the first point the second point now um an yuftah an 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 yuftah ala halihi ala qalbihi حال السؤال من معرفته ومحبته والذله والخضوع والتملق ما ينسيه حاجته that when the person makes a dua when he makes a dua حال السؤال whilst he's begging Allah certain things become more apparent to him he becomes more cognizant of Allah his love for Allah increases والذله he abases himself والخضوع his, his submission to Allah all of that increases through his dua which makes him forget his need in the first place ma yunsihi hajatu it makes him forget his need in the first place wa yakunu ma futiha lahu min dhalika ahabba ilayhi min hajatihi subhanallah to the extent that that which has opened up for him in terms of um of abasement and lowering oneself and submissiveness in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that becomes more beloved to him than the actual need that he has بِحَيْثُ يُحِبُّ أَنْ تَدُومْ لَهُ تِلْكَ الْحَالِ to the degree that he would actually prefer that his state like that remains where he is without that thing that he asks for why? because this is the, the, the reason this is because of this state that he has be, become closer to Allah وَتَكُونُ آثَرَ عِنْدَهُ آثَرَ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ مِنْ حَاجَتِهِ and that is more preferred to him than his need itself وَفَرَحُهُ بِهَا أَعْظَمْ مِنْ فَرَحِهِ بِحَاجَتِهِ and the happiness and the, the, the delight that he gets from the state that he is in of begging Allah and asking Allah that brings him more happiness than his worldly need لَوْ عُجِّلَتْ لَهُ وَفَاتُهُ ذَلِكَ فَهَذَا فَهَذَا لَا يُنَافِ رِضَى this type of dua does not oppose rida. This second type of dua doesn't oppose rida, and that's the really the subhan. And this goes back to uh, the fundamental question, okay, which is you know why we worship Allah. Okay, why do we worship Allah? Do we worship Allah simply because Allah is a means for us to attain paradise, or do we worship Allah because for who He is? Right, there are some people that worship Allah. The meaning of their prayers is just salvation in the afterlife, right? So, you know, they're just what their their ibadah is a, is a wasila, but you know, but there are others who you know their maqsad itself is it's a ibadah itself, it's worshiping Allah itself. All right, so <clears throat> listen to this. Qala ba'dul arifin. Some of the Gnostics they said. إِنَّهُ لَتَكُونُ لِي الْحَاجَةِ إِلَى اللَّهِ That some of them would say that I would have a need. I would have some sort of need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَسْأَلَهُ إِيَّاهَا And I will ask Allah for that need. فَيَفْتَحُ عَلَيَّا مِنْ مُنَاجَاتِهِ وَمَعْرِفَتِهِ So as a result, the doors of um, spiritual closeness to Allah opens through munaja, through my discussion, or through my conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what tadhal and lowering myself in front of him what tamallaqu bayna yaday and humbling myself in front of him ma ahab ma uhibbu ma'ahu an yu'akhkhar qada'aha wa tadumu li tilka al-hala tilka al-hal ma ahabba and so um yeah so i would i you know i would do that until that um you know i would love that uh, that the 
that 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 need that I have becomes delayed in being answered, and that my state, like in the state that I am in, in begging Allah, remains in that state. So that shows you how they were. So for people like that, then their their du'a itself, that yes, they would ask Allah for everything, but you know they didn't just see Allah as a means for their needs. They would see their servitude in their asking. Right, they would. Th that was their goal. Their goal was to attain servitude in their asking. It wasn't just for the goal itself, for the for the need itself, but for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Wa fi athar, in al abda la yadu rabbahu. And in a, in a narration, it says, in al abda la yadu rabbahu, that a servant he will call upon his Lord, فيقول and Allah will say to his angels, So uh, fulfill the needs of my servant. Fulfill the needs of my servant. But then he says, And then, but, but delay it. Why? Because I love hearing his dua. وَيَدْعُوهُ آخر, and another person will call upon Allah and Allah will say لِمَلَائِكَتِهِ اقضوا حاجته وعجلوها له Fulfill the need of my servant and be quick in doing so فَإِنِّي أَكْرَهُ صَوْتَهُ Because I dislike his, his voice. I dislike hearing him because what's the difference between the two? One just merely uses Allah as a means. Okay, and just you know, you just ask, you just turn to Allah when you're in desperate need. When this person has no love for Allah subhanahu wa taala in his heart, finds no pleasure in in engaging with Allah in du'a and remembering Him, so this person is essentially using Allah. Like with us as human beings, there are some people, you know, the only reason why they call you, yeah, is because they want something from you. They don't really value your friendship. They don't really value who you are and and what have you. They don't have much love for you. They know you, but you you know that they are calling you because they have a need that only you can fulfill. Do we like listening to such people? Do we like entertaining such people? You know, we we don't. Okay. وَقَدْرَوَى تِرْمِذِي Okay. وَقَدْرَوَى تِرْمِذِي And and that's you know that the, obviously there's a hadith. You know there's a famous saying or the line of poetry. Um, uh, that um, Ibn Adam, you know, if the son of Adam, if you were to ask him, he gets upset. But if you were to ask Allah, he would not become upset. And if you were not to ask Allah, he would become upset, right? So that's true, okay? That's also true. But again, you know, remember um, that the difference between the first state and the second state. And it's narrated in a, in, in a hadith in a Tirmidhi, Inna Allah yuhibbu an yus'al. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to be asked وَأَفْضَلُ الْعِبَادَ إِنْتِظَارُ الْفَرَجِ and, um, and the best uh, form of worship is إِنْتِظَارُ الْفَرَجِ is waiting for the, for the, for the relief. وَرُوِيَ أَيْضًا مِنْ حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرَيْرَ and it's also reported in حديث أَبُو هُرَيْرَ مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يُسْتَجِيبَ أَنْ يَسْتَجِيبَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَسْتَجِيبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ عِنْدَ الشَّدَائِدِ فَلْيُكْثِرُ مِنَ الدُّعَاءِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ that whoever will be pleased to for Allah to ask his du'as in times of difficulty, then let him make du'a, let him make plenty of du'a in times of ease, because that's an indication that the person um, doesn't engage with Allah purely for need. Okay, the famous hadith: "Ta'arraf in Allah fi al-raqai yarif ka fi shidda." Know Allah in times of ease. Allah will know, know you in times of difficulty. Why? Because if you know Allah in times of ease, then that's a true indication that you truly love Allah. It's an indication that you don't use Allah as a means to fulfill your needs. You have a genuine relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another hadith as well. And this is the hadith. That will let one of you call upon your Lord, ask your Lord, even if it's asking for salt. Or asking for the strap of his shoe when when it when, when it when it rips or when it breaks. Okay, so you ask Allah. That's the issue. But the real issue is what is the state of the heart? 
وفيه أيضا عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنه قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما سئل الله شيئا حب إليه من أن يسأل العافية وإن الدعاء لا ينفع مما نزل ومما لم ينزل فعليكم عباد الله بالدعاء أن حديث no one Allah has not been asked anything more beloved to him than asking for afia it's a, you know being in a state of well-being وإن الدعاء لا ينفع الدعاء will benefit a person from from those things which have been sent down in terms of tribulations and those things which haven't been sent down so you know it is upon you O servants of Allah to make dua فإذا كان هذا محبة الرب تعالى للدعاء فلا ينافي لحاح في الرضا so therefore if if this is the love of Allah for dua then clearly being insistent in asking Allah does not oppose rida but you have to uh, remember the the different states of a person when they are making dua what's you know what they what they're really intending and then finally uh, and 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 the third thing to remember is that a person should um you know withhold or from having any hope with with creation um meaning don't be dependent upon creation ويتعلق بربه في طلب حاجة then he should be dependent upon his Lord when seeing to his needs قد أفرده بالطلب أفرده بالطلب a person should single him out with his request لا يلوي على ما وراء ذلك فهذا قد تنشأ له المصلحة من نفس الطلب وإفراد الرب بالقصد so in this situation that's when it benefits a person okay when they're dependent upon their Lord and they single out Allah in their asking والفرق بينه وبين الذي قبله أن ذلك قد فتح عليه بما هو أحب إليه من حاجته فهو لا يبالي بفواتها بعد ظفره بما فتح عليه وبالله توفيق. And so um, the, the difference between the third group okay so this is the, the third state when, when you completely sever off your sort of um, dependent dependency with with creation right and the second state um the difference here is as he mentions uh ذلك قد فتح عليه بما هو احب اليه من حاجته with the second state essentially the person you know the, the results of his dua of of servitude and being closer to allah become more beloved to him than his actual need فَهُوَ لَا يُبَالِي بِفُوَاتِهَا So he, he doesn't care whether he doesn't end up getting what he asks for. Okay, because due to what he has attained from the spiritual closeness to Allah. That's the difference. وَبِاللَّهِ التَّوْفِيقِ And in, with, through Allah lies success. And that ends that section and that's where we'll stop for today, inshallah. Let me just um, look at your questions, inshallah. <laughs> right, so I must admit this is a difficult position to reach as as is this whole section <laughs> remember, this whole section is not an easy ridha is, is, there's a reason why it's not binding upon everybody Yeah. Uh, doesn't that then boil down to the intention behind asking for a specific, specific thing are you being persistent asking for wealth with a pure intention to do khayr because you see others not doing so with the wealth they have um yeah i mean it's 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 multifaceted i i guess uh intention plays obviously a very important role in uh, in what you're asking for so um you know and and he was quite clear in that when it comes to your hudud and nafs right where your own personal interests like worldly things but if you're asking things where where, where Allah's rida lies in such as asking wealth with a pure intention so to do khair then this is where Allah's rida lies so having ilhah in that he mentioned very clearly it's not blameworthy and it doesn't oppose rida because you're doing it for the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, those who claim they worship Allah for himself due to his glory um then such people almost must claim that they would withhold the temptations of this life without the threat of hellfire or promise of paradise for obedience. Is this fair to say? 
um, then such people must also claim that they would withhold the temptations of this life. Withhold the temptations of this life without the... They would withhold from... Okay, they would withhold... Sorry, okay, from the temptations of this life without the threat of the hellfire or promise of paradise is yeah absolutely the, the, that's true so people who worship allah for 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 himself then he, that's why you know i always say that if if we you know imagine paradise didn't exist just say hypothetically speaking paradise didn't exist the hellfire didn't exist uh, this group of people would still worship allah for who he is um is there a modern day definition of begging um, no, I don't think there's a modern definition. Um, there's a question of whether certain modern ways of asking, I guess, can fall under the d begging. Um, but no, there, there isn't a modern definition per se. Is there a correlation between doing little ibadah and an increase in desires? Um, no, I, I would say there is a correlation between sins, yeah, and an increase in desires. Probably more. I know it's a bit of a steep question, but Saad's question leads on to it. But is the reward of Jannah punishment of Jahannam part of Allah's manifestation of His perfection? Thus, their existence is necessary. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Um, I mean, again, again, it's, it's a hypothetical question. Yeah, it's a hypothetical question. Just say, you know, because it's true. You know, Allah is a shakur, right? Allah is, he appreciates our ibadah. And so the existence of paradise is a manifestation of Allah's shukr. It's a manifestation of Allah's um, uh, appreciation of our ibadah. Perhaps the ten Sahaba guaranteed paradise would be such people. I would say so. I mean, generally, the from the elite companions, I would say that they were, you know, they weren't like. Um, notice how, you know, um, the Bedouins they would come and, you know, the thing that would motivate them would be paradise, in the, ultimately, you know, and so that's why they said, yeah, you know, if I was to just establish the prayers. Just pray five times a day, give my zakat, you know, do psalm, you know, would I enter paradise? He said, yes, if, if, if you were to do that and you'd be truthful in that. So that indicates that, you know, they weren't interested in the aspect of maximizing their ibadah to please Allah, to be closer to him. They ultimately just wanted to get into paradise, which is not bad, which is a great thing. I mean, we, we should all desire to go into paradise. Yeah. And it's a good thing. It's a good quality to have. Um, but you don't you don't find that that type of attitude um, with with a, a lot of the, the the sort of more maybe senior and, and more well known companions. Wallahu alam. Right. Okay. Um, by the way, when I was when I'm sharing the screen, is it does it fill the whole screen up, or have you noticed that the screen is smaller? It fills it up. Okay, good. The whole screen, good, good. Because what what I'm doing now, I'm using um, I'm actually using an iPad to to annotate. So um, so. Alhamdulillah, it's worked well today in in the sense that, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm not a hisbi, so <laughs> I don't mind. I mean, I've got, I've got an iMac as well, so um, yeah. So the the later iPads that you, you can use the Apple Pencil, so it, it's it's been a better experience to be honest, annotating with an iPad. Um, have you started classes in the masjid? No, none of the masajid. I think they're doing any classes. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I want to try and use my old uh, webcam. Uh, see, if I can get it the settings right, I'll use that from next week, inshallah. So I think um, we'll be able to actually finish next week. I think we just need one more. Let me just see. Um, yeah, look, that's it. That's all that's left. We can we can finish next week. We only have a few pages left. Technically, if we did the two full hours, we probably could have done it today, but I don't have time. I need to go somewhere. Um, so, yeah, alhamdulillah, we will finish next week. That's sad. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, you know, I definitely want to go come back to this book and teach some chapters from it in the future. Um, perhaps, inshallah, when we finish, maybe Muhtasan um, Minhaj al-Qasidin, this will be the next book to go through, inshallah. Is it fair to say these final points alludes to being careful from a transactional relationship with Allah? Absolutely. Yeah, I would say I would say that. Um, someone referred to it recently as a cosmic. Uh, uh, what was it called? Um, not a jukebox. The uh, money box. Not the money. What's it called? Um, uh, I forgot the term he used now. Piggy not piggy bank. It was like. A, Basically, he was saying, "Don't, don't, don't view your relationship with Allah like a vending machine. <laughs> it's like a vending machine, a, a cosmical, cosmological vending machine. Your hasanat, your, your hasanat, and that's an attitude you find like a fruit machine. Yeah, it's an attitude you find amongst a lot of, um, you know, you find. And again, it's not wrong." Okay, it's not wrong where you know you want to accumulate hasanat. Everyone wants to accumulate hasanat, but again, for what reason? Like, like some people like you know always talk about hasanat. Like I'm doing this for ajr, for hasanat. But why though? What What's your reason? Now, if it's just to attain ajr in the afterlife, just just to, to just to maximize bliss in paradise. Again, that's permissible. It's not wrong, but ultimately we should be trying to aim higher. وَرِضْوَانٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ you know, Seeking God's pleasure is, is greater. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Build for me a home for you, close to you. Exactly, Jannah. رَبِّ بِنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ See, that's SubhanAllah, the wife of the um, Fir'aun. And that's what she asked for. And she's not just a house in paradise, but a house close to you in paradise. Exactly. Okay, inshallah, I think we will uh, stop there for today. Uh, apologies for the interference at the beginning of the of the lesson, uh, but um, yeah, we, we're almost there, getting the the ideal set up close, inshallah. So. Jazakum Allah everybody and inshallah I shall see you next week for the final lesson inshallah Subhanak Allah bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum salihal a'mal Assalamu alaykum